Alright, what's up y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up, man? You already know how it goes. Your boy be back with another video, man. Let me get everything situated. Um listen. Listen, 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 listen. Number one, man. I just want to start out by saying this, right? I'm gonna be doing this more often. Um this is a part of my phase in my entrepreneurship that I call just exploring. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Um, welcome, y'all. If you guys have not already, so um, I used to have a podcast. Um, it was Hustler's Mindset podcast, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot, and I think that it 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 had its perks, and it also taught me lessons, right? So. I'm going to be doing this one-on-one with you uh, more often on YouTube, on Twitch, and also I will be saving them and reposting them, of course, reposting clips and stuff like that. I'm going to try to do this um, periodically throughout the week. I don't have an exact schedule yet um, because I need to see and test out the market. So I call, this is like, um, I'm in my entrepreneur um, testing bag because I do feel as though I do want to have uh, you could say a podcast, but I want to have more so something that is a learning platform, but also something that is an entertainment platform at the same time. Um, so recently, or a couple of months ago, I say like th three months ago, three months ago, I tried to um, start a podcast. Now this podcast that I started, um, it was going great. It was going great. I had guests. Um, we were interviewing people and I think everything was going how I wanted it to go, except for the fact that I didn't see the results that I felt deemed a continuous uh, output of the effort that was given. So, prime example, when you record in a video, when as an entrepreneur, we do a lot of things behind the scenes. We do a lot of things behind the scenes, and sometimes the work that we do is is way more intricate than what other people see, if that makes sense. So if you own a tattoo parlor um, and you have a lot of clientele, you're cleaning your needles, what, half of the day? That's a badass example. That's a badass example. Hold on, let me, let me get another, because I don't know shit about tattooing. But I'll use it phone-wise, right? So boom, if I have a phone store and I'm saying, all right, listen, I'm gonna start repairing phones. Right, I, I see all these other phone stores repairing phones. I'm gonna start repairing phones because it seems like it's lucrative. It seems like something that I can do. And I sit there, I buy all the equipment, I buy all the screens, I kick out $600 for screens. Now it's all about waiting till the consumer comes in, but the consumer never comes in. And I'm the type of person if, okay, I'm providing a service or I'm doing something, I have to see the results. I have to, I have to see some type of results or if I don't see the results, cause I know they're not going to come immediately. I have to see something that's going to be trending upwards for me to continue to do it. If not, I'm going to go, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop doing it, but I'm going to go back to the drawing board and I'm going to reorganize it and I'm going to try and, you know, perfect it or try and make it to what I wanted it to be. And that's what happened with the original hustlers mindset podcast. And now I'm bringing you guys this because the first um, podcast was with me, my guy Mar, and then we had other people on. And it was episodes that didn't even release because it took so much editing. Like, it was just so much. And I'm not going to lie. I think I started to understand that the work that I was putting in, it wasn't worth it because it was nothing that I was technically gaining. And also, I had to go back and I had to improve myself. I had to improve my strategy I had to improve my business plan um so recently um since i stopped focusing so much on the podcast i was able to work on my courses um i am hustlers mindset.com i have courses that teach you how to make extra money macario automation which helps you basically with an app on your device on your phone you can start to sell on macario which is like an ebay or like an amazon and we list the products for you and all you do is sit back and take 100% of the profit. All you do is give us a budget, sort of kind of like you would do if you were boosting a post on Instagram or you boosting a post on Facebook. 
you will be able to set up a, a budget so let's say your budget is fifty dollars now we're going to list a hundred dollars worth of products on your macari for fifty dollars and we do it by, by a week basis you know what i mean so i think it's cool i'm gonna try and not edit um as much and i'm really really excited so if you haven't already my twitch is hustler mindset so it's hustlers mindset uh hustlers so hustler and with a s mindset um, my youtube is educated hustler my instagram of course is educated underscore underscore hustler and my business instagram for this platform is hustler underscore mindset well underscore underscore mindset um and i'm just trying to build this uh as a second business of course my first business if you don't know is um cell phone stores um phone buying phone flipping uh and all that so it's, it's going good uh and i want to talk about a lot of things that i think a lot of entrepreneurs are not transparent about and this is the first episode so right we're going to talk about something i recently had a halloween party and the halloween party w was really interesting i, I just want to I got to vent and, and that's really what it is. I just want to vent because I fucked up and, and I'm okay with saying that I fucked up because I really did. Mm -hmm. Like I fucked up bad. So mind you, it is 1034 in the morning um, on November 2nd and I'm still reminiscing on this, which after this, I, I got to put it behind. <laughs> I got to put it behind me. But look, so decided to have a halloween party i have a halloween i keep saying party game night i have a halloween game night every year okay this 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 year i'm like listen doing great financially um doing great business wise company wise things is flying off the shelf it's definitely time to advance and make things way more uh on a larger scale make them way more intricate well i keep saying it. make it better okay i just want to make the shit better so I'm like, all right, bet. So I go ahead and I plan all of this elaborate, extravagant stuff, right? Skate rooms and drinking games and floating balloon visual effects, a whole bunch of stuff, paying people to bang on doors, scare people, you know, all of that, right? So my main, my number one thing I was promoting to people is come on time. And you guys know what happened basically nobody everybody didn't come on time okay i think one person came on no two people came on time and i appreciate it um and everybody else didn't which fucked it all up because the game night was an interactive game night where everybody had to be participating in order for all of the games to work perfectly we had people that were late people that didn't come so people that you know they couldn't come uh last minute so then everything just fell apart and I think it made my night horrible, but most importantly, we're not even going to talk about my feelings or whatever, because I, I think the people there, they had a, a good time. But the main point I'm trying to get at is I put about $600 into this event and people was complaining about paying $15. People was complaining about paying $10. I had some people that they didn't want to pay, so they were doing everything in order not to. And I think that to me it really because my other game nights i didn't care about the money because i didn't invest much and it was just a, a you know a smaller scale and it was just to have fun this one was more about creating an experience for people and the experience that i was trying to create caused money and you know when it when it comes to the money people people act like money is a little funny and i just felt like that was really really a learning lesson for me especially as an entrepreneur when i'm i'm so business minded so everything i'm thinking is just so detailed and i'm thinking this is going to lead to that and then what if this doesn't happen like i had it all planned but what i did not have planned out was that people were going to come hours and hours late so when people came late some people came late and didn't pay and long story short it ended up being a waste of money like that's just what it was a waste of money but that's not even i think the biggest lesson for me the biggest lesson that i really really want to get out is i trusted somebody um well i trusted a couple people with this event because it wasn't an event that i can only do myself it was an event that i needed other people to help me with right so boom the first person that i think i i um 
I learned a lesson from, and this doesn't have to be a negative lesson. Um, but you guys, if you know me personally, you know, I call, I call people out. I call motherfuckers out all the time. That's just how I am. I try to keep everything a hundred. Um, but my friend a week before the event got into a, a car accident and he was helping me with the, um, party or with the game night, right? He got into a, and this wasn't no little car accident. He got into a really, really, you know, tragic car accident and got a concussion. And when he got that concussion, he wasn't texting nobody, calling nobody, nobody knew where he went. It's like he disappeared. And that took me out of, you know, my game night planning bag because I was like, oh, I got to find my guy. You know what I mean? So we looking all around for him. Lo and behold, we find that, you know, he was in a car accident. Boom. Fast forward to him recovering um, the next week. You know, he still had little symptoms. So he had to keep going back and forth to the hospital which led me to have to set up everything basically by myself and also run a store at the same time. So now I put the money out for all of the materials, but also I'm, I'm, I'm basically putting everything up myself and having to run a store, which I couldn't do. So I had to shut my store down um, because the event was at my store. So I had to shut my store down um, and set up myself which made me lose money when I was supposed to have, you know, one person, you know, manning the shit with the store. And then I would be, um, decorating or vice versa. You know what I mean? So that really, really led to a, a, a big loss. I'm already kicking out bread and then now I'm losing money. So like that was okay. B what you should have did is you should have, um, not just relied on one person, but if you, you know, did have a large scale event, have it to where you at least have a backup plan. And that's not what I had. That's not what I set up. Um, and you know, I lost a lot of money due to that. Not to mention, cause October was a horrible month. Not to mention, um, before he even got in a car accident, I did personally something stupid, which was I trusted my staff to be able to hold my store down while I flew out to Atlanta for a weekend. I flew out to Atlanta and my store fell apart. Nothing was getting done. Nobody was working. And I lost money on that aspect too. Another lesson, um, not trusting other people to care about your business as much as you, because nobody going to care about your businesses like you, you know what I mean? Nobody, you know, nobody, no, no matter how close they are, they're not going to care about your business. Like you're going to care about your business. So then guess what? I had to take that loss. So now it's like I made two tragic mistakes. And then the third one, was was I think the biggest one and the biggest topic I think of this of this podcast is or whatever this is is this previous to the event I got a friend and this friend um, he provides um, I don't know if I want to say because then people would know he provides a service okay a service that a service for parties he provides a service for parties I don't I don't even want to blast him out because of how I'm about to, how I feel about it and what I'm gonna say about it, I, I think it could be damaging to his name, and I don't want to do that um, because I'm not a hater. You know what I mean? I just don't like the fact of what it was done. But neither here nor there. So this person provides a certain service for parties, or he was starting to. He's starting his business up. Um, and me being a friend that I am, I'm like, yo, listen, you can bring your service to my party and, you know, we'll film it and, you know, be, it'll be good for promotion. You know what I mean? It'll be good for promotion. So I'm like, you know, let's set that up. I text him probably two weeks before the event. I was like, yo, I don't want no bullshit, bro. Like, I really want you to, you know, I really want to help you. Like, I see the potential and I want to help you. He like, yeah, bro. Like, I could literally tell you guys what I said to this guy. Like, the guy was just starting out and I'm like, yo, I got you, bro. I got your back like a brush straight. You feel me? And let me see what I said. Okay. So it was October 12th. My event was October 28th. I said, yo, bro, how many blank can you have ready for the 28th? I want to make it right this time. Cause we had another event and I, and I tried to get him, but he came, but it was just complete bullshit. He burnt my floor. Like it was just complete bullshit. 
So I said, how many can you have? He's like, I can have five or six. I said, I need you to be on point. He said, I am, bro. I sent him the flyer and everything. Um, and then we proceeded. So, boom. Friday, October 14th. Okay. So, again, I told him I need him to be on point on October 12th. October uh, 14th, he texts me and he says, your Halloween party on the 30th? And I was like, no, it's on the 28th. He said, okay. Boom. Because I was promoting another party too. So, October 15th comes. I said, um, I asked him a question about if he's going to go to our other friend's game night. And he was like, yeah, I'm like, bet. So we go to my other friend's game night, and this is way before, this is a week before mine. We go there, and this same guy that's supposed to be providing a service for my game night, he's at, he provides the service for my other friend's game night, um, and the service was shitty. Like, it was shitty. So now I'm like, hmm, I'm just sitting back. I'm like, hmm, hmm. Okay. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I want the board to be providing anything for me type time. So, boom, that that's that. So, then, um, October twenty third. I said, how many people are you coming with? He said, like, three. I said, all right. October 24th. So, the 24th comes. Um, the 24th comes. So, my event is the 28th. The 24th comes. He says, I got my blank. How many do you need? I said, I need three to four. He's like, I got you. This is the 24th, okay? So, I'm looking back at it. The 24th is Monday, and my event is on Friday, okay? Already told him the date, already told him everything. This guy on Friday never shows up. Tells me I thought it was on Saturday. So, like, that I think was to me, the, and I blocked the shit out of his everything, okay? Like, I blocked him, and I was just like, you know, I'm not even mad. Boy's a weirdo. And I got my feelings because it's like, Especially when I when I trust you to provide something and then I have to see that you're not business like that to me is weird. Okay. And that to me was the epitome of me understanding that you can no longer have access to me because I don't want you to have access to me and I'm reliable to shit that you want me to do and you're not the same for me. And also it's like I realized you can't help somebody based upon what you feel their potential is. That's where I think I had the biggest lapses. I thought this person had potential. So I'm thinking, all right, boom, I'm about to bring out this person. But that's not my job. This person could have the most potential in the damn world. But you already see this person is disorganized. This person doesn't have it. This person doesn't want it. And so it's nothing I can do. In therapy, they say you can do all the talking you want, but you cannot help somebody if they don't want the help. I can't make somebody successful. I'm still trying to make my damn self successful. So it's like I can't do nothing for this person because this person isn't doing shit for themselves. And that, that, I had those mistakes previously, but I think that mistake was one of the biggest. Now, I'm forgetting a major detail. And I, I, I'm really not forgetting it, but I'm going to say it because this may have been why he didn't show up. So, boom, Monday of my event, he asked me how many do I need. He calls me on Wednesday of uh, the same week of my event, and he's like, yo, bro, I'm going to charge you $120 for, to bring the hookahs. So, I'm like, how you going to charge me? Now, I didn't say this to him, but in my head, I'm like, how you going to charge me $120 when I just saw your service was bad? And also, why are you charging me $120 to bring your service to my event? when you should be charging the people in my event for the service. That's just like somebody saying, all right, boom, I'm a bartender, but I'm gonna come to your event. And when I come to your event, I'm gonna charge you a fee for letting me come to your event. And then I'm gonna charge people 
for the drinks. It, it doesn't make sense. It would make sense if it was an open bar, but for the service that you're providing, you could charge people ten dollars per whatever and go about it like that. So I was like, I gotta talk that over with my partner, and I'm and I'm at C. But yeah, m- most likely it's just a vending opportunity. I'm not charging you any vending fee. So that I think to me was one of the reasons maybe he didn't pop out. But I just feel as though that was just some real weird ass shit. Weird. Weird ass shit. And I find that a lot in Philly. Like, I find that a lot in Philly is is just weird ass shit. Weird ass unprofessional shit. And And I've worked with a lot of great people in Philly, though. But it's like the people that are closest to you. Or the people that feel close to you or the people that you, you know, have dialogue with on a regular, they be the people doing the weirdest shit. And that was just some weird ass shit because he was on my guest list as well. He he was one of the people that didn't. Sh- it was just like, that was so fucking weird. So fucking weird. So weird. So the event fell apart. And that's what I get. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I get. I got humble. You know what I mean? I got humble because I needed to get humble. And when I said it fell apart, it fell apart to my standards. And I'm okay with it. You know what I mean? I'm okay with it falling apart. I'm okay with it not being what I wanted it to be. Because that's what I needed. Because once I had that, now I know, all right, just like the podcast idea I had that went bad. Just like the cell phone stores I had that went bad. Just like the courses I wanted to sell that went bad. Just like anything else that I wanted that went bad. I got to go back to the drawing board. And I'm going to go 10 times harder next time. Because Lord knows I don't give the fuck up. You know what I mean? Lord knows I don't care. I don't care about failure. Failure to me is way more important than success. I love to fail. Because when I fail... It sort of kind of ignites me to be like, hmm, well, why didn't this go inside this peg? Or why why didn't this work? Why did this not start? Why did this not finish? What happened that made this not what I wanted it to be? And then I figure it out. And that's the same thing with this event. Same thing with October. I know I spent so much money doing shit that did not need to be done. I went so far and, and so extra and so beyond for no fucking reason. No fucking reason. I brought a whole smoke machine and this, that, and the third. And set the and, and it's like set the fucking fire alarm off and then the fire people came. It's like I couldn't even do it. Use that joint the smoke thing because it was bad. It was a bad idea. It was just a whole bunch of dumb shit. So I'm not blaming it on one person. I'm not blaming it on one thing. I'm blaming it on me. Everything that I'm talking about today is me, and I just wanted to really like introduce this um i don't know what i'm calling it i really want to call the hustle the mindset uncensored for real for real because i'm uncensored as a motherfucker on this bitch and that's just because you just be going through shit mentally as an entrepreneur and i feel like we hide it so much because we want to seem like something and it's like it's not it i want to be talking about all the uncut stuff um dating life um uh partnerships that go wrong um deals like everything because y'all need to see it because it could be somebody watching me i don't care if it just reaches one motherfucker it could be one person watching me that can learn from my mistakes or it's like oh shit i'm going through that or oh shit i might go through that or oh shit i might do that and they learn from it and that's my point and that's just my point and that's my point you feel me in general that's my point okay that's my point so speaking of that I'm about to get out of here because I have a meeting to do, a really, really big, important meeting um, involving a partnership that I'm really, really excited about. Um, and we are going to reconvene. I'm going to be uploading this, this video ASAP, and I'll be uploading videos on, on a whole bunch of topics. Again, man, I don't know what platform you're seeing this on, but follow all of my social media. Let's, let's tap in. Um, Let's stay locked in. You feel me? Let's stay locked in. Um, And uh, I will see you guys later, man. Make the money work for you. Talk to you later.
Peace. Put him on the crib, though it would cheat, but he ain't wanna listen. Put him on the money, he was broke, but he ain't wanna fix it. It's a competition where I'm from, who gon' be the richest?